G'day legends, today we're going to have a look at ways to improve your drum mixes and add depth and character to them with a couple of techniques that I like to use. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first technique we're going to have a look at is side chaining our snare to our room mics. Now the cool thing about this is every time the snare hits, the rooms are going to pop out a little bit more. All right, so let's check out our room mics and what they sound like. Now I've got the reverb at the start of the chain here and after that there's some compression, a bit of like saturation, EQs, bunch of stuff going on to get our room mics sounding a bit more lively and like it's in a bigger space because these were tracked in a small room. So then what we're going to do is before our reverb is we're going to add something like Fab Filter Pro MB. Now we're just going to click anywhere, drag the sides out and make a band all the way across. We're gonna change our range to about minus 10 and change it to expand mode. Then we're gonna set our attack to fairly fast, leave our release roughly where it is, maybe a little bit slower, and then a bit of a harder knee. Then if we open up the expert tab, we're gonna change it to external side chain, and then we're gonna pick our snare drum. Now if you're using a snare sample, I recommend triggering this off the snare sample. So I'm gonna do that because we get less chance of false triggers from cymbals and stuff that's bleeding through the snare. Pretty cool. You can hear that the rooms are now popping when the snare's hitting. So let's turn our room mics down now to where they should be sitting in the mix and then bring our snare drum mic into the mix and let's have a listen to how this sounds. When we have Pro and B turned on, the drum mix kind of cleans up a little bit because there's not as much clutter from that room mic sound, but the snare drum still has that explosive room sound about it, adding a little bit of life and depth to that sound. Because if we mute the room mics, have a listen to the drum sound, it sounds a little bit more sterile. So there you go, really cool trick to just add some depth and life to your snare drum sound. If you guys are enjoying this video and you've stuck around this long, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all the new videos. Okay, so we've all heard of parallel compression, but we can also do a bit of distortion in parallel with our drums, which can add some really cool sustain or some nice crunch to our drum sound. So let me show you two different types of distortion that I like to use on drums to add a little bit of character to them. So on our kick, snare and tums, hats, rooms, all of our buses for our drums here, I'm just gonna set up a send. So set up bus number 10, come over here, right click on it, create track. And then I'm going to just drag this up here change the output to bus one. So it's going into our drum bus. I'm gonna add some distortions to show you what I like to do. So the first one, let's have a look at Sound Toys Radiator. So we can get this nice and crunchy just by pushing that input into this. It's kind of like preamp kind of distortion. And it's pretty cool. You can add a little bit of bass and treble. Just gonna pull a little bit of the overheads and room mics out of this, just for a bit less cymbals. We can play with the mix knob. Now I'm just gonna turn this down and then we're gonna blend it in with our drum sound. just adds like a little bit of crunch into the drums. You could just have like a little bit of that in there and it can just add some really nice character to it. And we're gonna have a look at Sound Toys Devil Lock. Check this one out because it's actually insane. Pretty crazy, hey? So let's have a listen to this now, blend it in, and just see how much sustain it adds to this drum sound. It 
It's crazy, hey? You don't even need that much in there and it adds heaps to the sound. So this is another technique that I like to use if my cymbals are sounding overly harsh, a de to rein in the harshness on the cymbals. So the one I generally reach for first is the IOSIS E Square de from the Slate Digital Bundle. There's a preset for overheads called Auto High Compression. So what I'm gonna do is turn this up to 100%, bypass it on and off so you can hear exactly what it's doing to our overheads. So it really rolls off and smooths out those ultra high frequencies in our cymbals. Let's just play with this mix knob and find a bit of a sweet spot. And around there sounds really nice. It just takes the edge off the cymbals. This is also a really great effect on like your room mics. I really wanted to roll out all of that ultra high frequency in the room sound just to get a little bit of a darker, more mid rangey sound. So this next tip is kind of about buying back more headroom in our mix because our drums are generally the loudest sound. And every now and then you might get a stray snare or a kick or a tom that's a little bit louder than everything else that just pokes through and gets away from everything. So using things like clippers and limiters to rein in the individual sounds a bit more before they go to the drum bus. So for example, on our snare track, we can just grab something like the little clipper from Boz Digital Labs. And all we're gonna do is pull down the ceiling on this so it's sitting just above where the bulk of our snares are hitting. And then if any stray ones sneak past, it's gonna clip them. We could do a similar thing to our kick. And you can see it's only working a teeny tiny bit, so we can't really hear anything actually happening, but it's just clipping those stray peaks that are coming through, keeping our kicks and snares very consistent. So let's have a look at what we can do to add a little bit more depth and thickness to our sound with just using a short ambience style reverb. So off my snare bus, I am just going to add a send, and then we're gonna send this to our drum bus. Okay, let's find a reverb to use. Let's just keep going with the Slate Digital stuff. So let's get Verb Suite Classics. I'm actually just gonna pull up a preset here in the drums. So let's use the bright CAL-ish snare. Now let's turn this down and bring it back in and listen to how the snare starts to thicken up nicely. You don't need a lot of that. You can just have like a little bit of that mixed in and it's gonna add weight to your snare sound. And that's just a nice way of thickening your snare up. Now let's say that you are anti-drum samples or say you've got a drum mix that you're really happy with that doesn't have samples, but you feel like it needs a little bit more life to it. You could trigger a room sample to add more depth and dimension to your snare sound. So let's set this up. So click on your snare channel, press command D, click on this, hold option and drag down. So we've duplicated it now. Remove everything off this channel strip and let's add Steven Slate trigger two. And now let's just grab a room sound. Now let's just blend this in with our natural snare sound. It still sounds authentic. It doesn't sound like you've covered it in drum samples and it's just a nice way to add more depth and character to that sound. So if you feel like your drums are lacking in tone and sound, try some of this stuff out and see if it helps bring them to life. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.